Good morning. I am Mr. Hare, and this will be the first lecture for the fall semester. We'll be talking about Chapter 1, Unit 1 here, uh, dealing with the new world. As a note to all my lectures here, if you're following along with the PowerPoints provided through my website, <clears throat> everything I say on this may not be on the website or the, the PowerPoints. There might be additional information. Um, There'll be people in this classroom as well, so if someone asks me a question, I'll answer that directly. Uh, but uh, my intent is to make these, these lectures pretty straightforward from the material and then do all of their announcements for the course uh, separate. Okay, focus questions for this, this, this first lecture will be, how uh, did Indian and European uh, ideas of freedom differ? What implied or impelled European explorers to go across the Atlantic? What pulled them across? Uh, we're gonna look at what happened when the peoples of the Americas came in contact with the Europeans. Death, um, I mean, a lot of them died. And then how did the Spanish, French, and Dutch explore and settle uh, the New World? So next slide. Dream and introduction, the first part, first slide here. So, Adam Smith stated, the discovery of America would never was one of the great, two greatest and most important events recorded in the history of mankind. I would tend to agree with that. Discovery of America, or the rediscovery, as if you would put it, um, really de definitely impacted it. Today, historians shy away from the word discovery, obviously, because the Americas were there and there was native people there, or at least early inhabitants. In 1492, Columbus set in motion uh, a dramatic event that would have lasting impacts on the, uh, the two worlds, Europe and the Americas. People of both continents were unaware of each other uh, officially. This can be debated and so something new may come along. And there is debate about whether the, the Americas or Africas or whatever knew each other. Uh, there is evidence in uh, modern-day Mexico down into Ecuador of pottery that is very, very unique. Uh, in Japan, there's a pottery, that pottery that's very similar as far as the weaving and everything. Is it coincidence? Maybe. Uh, they don't know. But they're now starting to find there may be more connections uh, across the Atlantic. Uh, they found a mummy. I can't remember if it was in Egypt or South America. They found mummy with a certain type of drug that was not indigenous to that area that was on the other continent. So there's, they're finding more and more items that may suggest that there was more travel and contact between the worlds than we uh, previously understood. Uh, food crossed the Atlantic and so did deadly diseases and that's a big thing that will be a theme as we talk about it. Diseases will play an important part as we move forward. Start of African slave, slavery in the New World. Um, I know there's a movement now, 1619 uh, curriculum that I've seen going all across uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter and so on. Um, that's fine. Uh, increased education about uh, African slavery specifically is great, but slavery existed in the New World long before the Europeans even came. Um, and there was indentured servants before 1619. So be, be understanding and cognitive as you go into that if you've heard about that, which is fine. Always un expanding the knowledge of the slave trade is great, but understand that it's not just limited to Africans and it, it did exist before 1619. And the Europeans had dreamed of a place to improve themselves. And this is going to offer not just land, money, and glory, but a place that Europeans can kind of start afresh. However, this opened a new age of both freedom and slavery and at the cost of other people. Uh, the first Americans, the settling of the Americas, uh, were most were descended from hands uh, from hands of hunters and fishers across what was called the Berningia Land Bridge. If you've studied any basic American history course from seventh to high school, they always talk about the land bridge that once connected Europe or Asia and North America up by Alaska. It was pronounced Berningia or the Bering Strait Bridge. Um, between 15 and 60,000 years ago, we, we, we don't know the exact dates here. This is all still open for debate. Um, the land bridge was there. Uh, during the, some of the last ice age, uh, there was ice that came together and created this land bridge. And the, what these did, uh, they believe, is these hunter-gatherers uh, followed wild animals and they came down through the Americas spreading out. It's a theory. And yes, natural climate change does happen. We are naturally warming outside of man. I mean, I'm not true here to say that climate change is not happening, uh, but uh, it's not all man created. Some of it is natural. Now, from this, these people crossed the bridge as the climate warmed. They got trapped on one side or the other of the bridge, and this is where they think the populations of the Americas came about. Some of this data and numbers are highly debated among scholars. We're not 100% sure. It's a theory. It's a good theory, but not, like I said, uh, without a lot of debate. Spread out as the world warm, um, and all the way down in South America, um, and there is some evidence that other people might have made contact, but not proving, like I talked about the Japanese pottery earlier. 
Indian societies of the Americas. The Americas were hardly a barren wasteland. Uh, these groups that supposedly uh, came down, uh, Tehuacan or Tenochtitlan, depending on how you pronounce it, was the capital of the Aztec Empire, believed to have over 250,000 people at its height in the uh, between the 13 and 1500s. Inca Kingdom had more than tw maybe 12 million with a people and population and a complex system of roads and bridges that connected the whole empire. No North American group uh, as large as the South American, um, but they all lacked the technology Europeans had mastered, such as metal tools and machines, gunpowder, scientific knowledge for long distance navigation, and horses. Horses are not native to North America. Uh, contrary to popular Hollywood movies from the 50s, Indians did not have horses until the Europeans came. This was where Europeans considered Indians backward, backwardness or primitiveness because they didn't have some of these basic things Europeans took, a, uh, granted, took for granted. So next slide. The first Americans, too, or the, the, the photo up there. If you look at the, the image on the board, if you follow along in the PowerPoint, you can see the land bridge of Greninja and then the supposed um, spreading out down south. Here's a, uh, a painting of Teotihuacan. If you look on that, the next slide. You can notice Teotihuacan is in the middle of a lake, and this goes back to some of the old Aztec legends about, and that's where the Mexican flag is an eagle landing on a cactus and so forth. Now, the first Americans too. Um, mound builders in the Mississippi River Valley before Europeans, before Egyptians built pyramids, debatable, built semi semicircle mounds uh, across the area. Uh, the Hakote near St. Louis between 10,000 and 30,000 people around 1200 A.D. Uh, built mounds. Now, if we even uh, looking south of here from Rockport, Mound City gets its name from mound builders. Mounds have been historically throughout the, the country. Um, they're not just unique to our part, but mound building along the Mississippi River in this area uh, was very prevalent. Western Indians, uh, there was an arid region. Hoping the Zuna lived out there, built large planned communities, uh, but they were usually near water sources. Um, then you have also the Pueblo Indians. Uh, that built the cliff dwellings, the, the clay buildings that we often think of in the West, and Pacific Coast independent villages that fished, hunted, and gathered in remote parts of the Pacific Northwest. Indians of Eastern North America lived on corn, squash, beans, and hunted fish. They were also uh, what we'd often make up of the uh, uh, most prominent ones that early Americans would come into. Little centralized authority until the 5th century, and they're going to create what's called the I Iroquois League. Uh, five people, a great league of peace between the Mohawk, Owenaden, the Kagawagi, the Seneca, and the Onondaga. These five were the primary ones that you would think of interaction of the f Europeans uh, on the East Coast. Indians had great diversity and centered on the immediate social group. This conflicted with European way, and uh, Europeans tended to lump all Indians together, and they were all like the Indians had many different subgroups, and they were all uh, distinctly uh, different. And if we look at this next slide, you can see a photo of a mound, just an uh, elevated piece of ground, and you can see where uh, throughout uh, cultures and different Indian tribes throughout uh, the Americas. Next slide. The first Americans, three. Now, Native American religion. Uh, shared common characteristics involved farming and hunting, and usually it, it devolved around spiritual power that connected to the world around them. Um, Sophistic. To fuse the world and sacred spirits can be found in all kinds of living inanimate things, and that's inanimate things, and that's why the Indians often characterize things uh, as uh, working together um, with a spirit and etc. Uh, through religious ceremonies, they aim to harness the aid of pow uh, powerful supernatural forces to serve human interests. Most believed in a single creator uh, stood atop the whole hierarchy, but they definitely d d believed in different spiritual realms um, and uh, a lot of. Um, Everything had a spirit, and there's, everything's connected. The Europeans arrive, and they, they needed to convert to a true, true Christian faith, and they're often going to label the Indians' practices and such as pagan and backwards and um, wrong. Now, to understand one thing, if you when these northern Native Americans, not as much, but when you go into Central American, the Aztec, as we now know, more and more history, the Aztec were pretty ruthless uh, people. Uh, one thing to note... Uh, I often think we forget about like the Aztec and the Inca. They were some of their methods of dealing with it, their laws and stuff, would have been kind of barbaric to many Europeans because it was so much different. They have found, I think it was the 
the Aztec uh, were known to now we now know did uh, uh, children sacrifices um, and if you ever see the movie Apocalyptico it shows not necessarily children sacrifices but sacrifices in general they are pretty brutal so a European arriving and seeing this could paint a picture of you know a lot more um, cruelty um, than maybe most Indian tribes practice uh, land and property um, generally Indians assigned a plot of land to individual families to use for a season or more hunting land claimed as well unclaimed uh, land reclaimed free for anyone to use not the European model Indians were not devoted to the accumu uh, accumulation of wealth uh, material goods that were um, the European model first Americans for gender relations only openly engaged in premarital sexual relations and women could divorce their husbands this was different than the European model Mat matrimonial centered on the clans or kinships groups in which children became members of their mother's family not the father so this is reverse to the European under English law a married man controlled the family's property uh, and a wife had to be had to um, had no independent legal authority in the European model Indian women could own dwellings and tools uh, so a drastically different uh, than their counterpart and so obviously if the Europeans see this this is going to threaten their system the European views of the Indians noble savages grew worse over time uh, they will start taking more apprehension toward the Indians centered on religion land use and gender relations maybe even worship the devil they would often uh, uh, accused them of. Spanish claimed land by conquest while Dutch, French, and English claimed land because it was actually not being used they said it was just there. Described them as lacking freedom. So the common theme here is the Spanish are going to come and conquer them and then say they got to convert to Catholicism. The French, Indian, and Dutch are going to say well the land is not actually being used so we're going to take it and use it uh, uh, and work the land. So the Europeans mindset was much much different than the Indians and in how to use the land. Indian freedom Indian freedom, European freedom. Obviously, here as we look at this first slide, two drastically different. They're they're plural. They're not they're not going to be they're going to contradict each other quite a bit. Indian freedom. Most Europeans concluded that the notion of freedom was alien to Indian society, so that is not correct. Uh, but to the, the the Europeans, they are not going to see the what they would think is freedom. Concluded this because they didn't live under government or rules that was much more loose uh, and less formal. Indians viewed group autonomy and self-determination and the mutual obligations that were aware of the sense of belonging or individual freedom community. They're not communists, they're not socialists, but what they're going to do is community. We all work together to help each other. We have our individual freedoms. We all put part of the pie in there. Uh, and this is going to clash with the Europeans. It was all about hierarchical, strict structure, uh, and strict rules and regulations. Um, and then you're obviously going to bring in the Christian liberty, religion. Um, Europeans had numerous ideas of freedom, and a lot of times it revolved around practicing the Christian principle that I wanted to. One concept common throughout Europe, misunderstood less uh, as a political or social status than the source of spiritual condition, was where you stood spiritually. Freedom meant abandoning the life of sin and to embrace the teaching of Christ. Uh, each country, it was different, and religious uniformity was essential to public order, especially in Spain. If you study the Inquisition, uh, religious uh, authority and control or um, was very paramount. They didn't want disorder, disorder break, chaos, chaos was sin, and etc. Those who disagreed were, pers were, were, were persecuted or driven out. And this is where you kind of get, we'll get to later with the pilgrims. They dissented with a different take on um, American religion or Christian religion, and that's why they came because they want to practice their version of it. Uh, Indian freedom and European freedom too. Freedom of authority in Europe, uh, in its secular form, the equating of liberty um, with obedience to a higher authority suggests that freedom meant obedience to the law. So if you're going to be a good Christian, good here, you're going to follow the law, uh, understand that not all are equal. You have a hierarchical status that you're in and ranked of graduation of social status. Men were dominant, women were submissive, ordained by God. So this is a very strict uh, social structure structure um, in the this society. Uh, I don't think modern women would like this at all, would they? No. Modern women would rebuke. They would take whatever they had. They'd take their pitchforks. They would throw stuff and try to you know, hit people and get things going, right? They're not going to adhere to it. So even looking through the modern lens, it's hard for us today to comprehend that, right? Well, he said, well, it's backwards, all this. We're no different than the Europeans at that time looking at it. That was their structure. 
that's what worked for him. Now, was there some bad things about it? Absolutely. But was it all men just taking advantage of women, rape, pillaging, and all? No, 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 no. That's not, that's not the case. What it did provide them indirectly without a lot of people realizing it was stability. You've got all been in classes where you have a kid that distracts everything. I think most people would prefer order and efficiency versus chaos, right? And this was their version of order, no chaos. And people were more willing to do that if it provided them also protection, food, and other things. Now, liberty and liberties in this society, liberty came from knowing one social place and fulfilling the duties appropriate to one's rank. And many people bought into that. They, they understood where they were in the pecking order. Numerous modern civil liberties did not exist as we think of today. Because you were a low class, that's where you're at, but it wasn't always bad. Now, it could be a lot better. I, I'm not disagreeing, but like, this is how things were maintained, the status quo. Nonetheless, every European country that colonized the New World claimed to be spreading freedom and for its own population and for Native Americans. Obviously, we know the Native American story is not that rosy, but for Europeans, this was the first opportunity they had to break out of that mold. Now, the idea was the old European model would carry over. In some cases, it did, but people will obviously in the colonies challenge in that and change it. And we'll get to our own history later, and that's the, the point of this American history class. It does change. The expansion of Europe, the second uh, event Adam Smith liked to the Columbus voyage 1492, so the first event was by Adam Smith was 1492, was the discovery by Portuguese navigators of the sea route from Europe to Asia. So that was the other one. Conquest began as an offshoot of the quest for a sea route to India. So the first major thing was the sea route from Europe to Asia. And if you look at the map behind me or look at any map, you understand going from Europe to Asia is quite the feat. Now we have a strait that cuts through the Suez Canal, which cuts through Africa. But at this point, that was not yet um, established. You had to go all the way around the tip of Africa. Very lucrative trade. But the point of this is, that's why Columbus will go west, thinking he can get there quicker when it happened to be another continent. But it's going to open up a whole new world of economic opportunity. If I had to tell you, or ask you, what motivates most of you, you're going to say money. The idea to make money, to take your girlfriends out, your boyfriends out, do whatever, uh, go to a movie, buy clothes, uh, get the new phone, whatever it may be. You're going to be economically motivated. You're going to pick your career, sometimes based off of money. Don't pick teaching. It's not lucrative, but it's also enjoyable. It's not the worst job you could get paid for. But the point of this is economic decisions are going to drive a lot of your things, whether what car you buy, what house you build by, where you live, etc. Economically motivated wanted to eliminate the middleman of Asia. So if you look at why, so you look at old world history, trade between Asia and Europe was starting to flourish heavily at this point. So when Columbus came, he's going to open up a whole new world where people can make money. And that's going to be the big old, bigger, big old, biggest single motivator is I can make more money now. Now, Chinese and Portuguese navigation, the first global empire was not European, it was Asian. The Chinese had went into the Pacific in that area around India. Admiral Zing He actually reached all the way to the east coast of Africa. He spent 30 years sailing the oceans. And there's even a debate today that the Chinese hit the west coast of America uh, during the 1400s or previous or prior to that. There's a, there's shows that talked about hunting, finding the junk, uh, which was the name of the Chinese vessels up in the Pacific, uh, like up in Oregon, Washington area. However, the China did not feel the need for overseas expansion and ultimately ended the support in 1433. And they're going to pull back their fleets and they're not going to continue to explore. What that's going to do when they do that, they're not going to encounter the, the Portuguese, the British, the, 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 the French, the Spanish, and so on. And they're going to allow them to take over those parts of Africa and those trade routes. Portuguese continued on down the east coast of Africa little by little. Their special ships were called Caravel, special long designed ships. I don't know if you look at it up here, it's just a simple ship with a mast, and they had perfected the sailing technique. Now, you can see the route here um, where the Zheng He was sailing up until 1433. He was sailing a lot of area that would be eventually taken over by the Portuguese. Uh, very effective. Uh, but most people don't even think about the Chinese being a master sailing group because they quit sailing. They basically said, we're not going to do it anymore. We don't want to worry about it. And so they pull back. 
Now, freedom and slavery in Africa. And then here's the Portuguese routes before I get that one second. If you look on the slide, this shows you little by little how much uh, more the Portuguese and the Spanish did. The one thing to note, look, going from China to Europe by land is not easy. So they were trying to use the water as a faster route. Now I'll tell you, down at the Cape of Good Hope, the Horn of Africa is not a good place to sail. Neither is the, 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 the Horn of South America. That's why they were looking, and when Columbus went west, trying to find a much, much quicker route to Asia. Now the expansion of Europe, too. Freedom and slavery in Africa. Slavery long predated coming of Europeans. The coming of the Portuguese escalated or accelerated the Biden selling of slaves from Africa. I want you to understand, the slave trade is horrific. The Europeans play a major part in it, but African slaves were, were bought or were sold by Africans. Most of all the slaves acquired in the central part of Africa will be acquired by rival tribes and sold to Europeans. I don't want you to forget that. I'm not trying to play the blame all on the, Europe, the, the, the Africans, but I want you to understand is it, it's a double-edged sword that if you're going to point the whole narrative, you have to understand that African tribes enslaved other African tribes and then sold them to make money. Now, some early explorers here. Diaz will be the one that goes all the way around the tip and over into um, over by India. And then Vasco da Gama, or Diaz will go down the coast and then Vasco da Gama will even go more around the tip, I believe, up into India. The point is they're working way down their African coast and they keep expo exploring further on around. Um, I don't think it's in here, but the first to navigate the, the, the whole world was Magellan's ship. And understand, Magellan himself did not make the, the whole trip around the world. His ship didn't make it around the world. They circumnavigated it. But Magellan will die in the Philippines in the Civil War. Now, the voyages of um, Columbus. I'm going to tell you this. I hate Christopher Columbus. I think he's one of the worst people in history as far as just a person. Uh, what happened, yes, there's good and bad. He opened up the West. He obviously ushered in the death of many uh, uh, Indians. He was kind of a scrupulous person. Um, and I hate that we celebrate Columbus Day. I think we should change it to either a National Voting Day or some other holiday. I don't want Native Indigenous Day. That's that's the wrong message too because uh, that, that, that doesn't fix the issue. Uh, but I, I do think we should quit celebrating um, Columbus Day in general. Now, but what, what was the Columbus's voyages? And when I'm gonna move past a lot of the narratives that people often peddle and stuff. He's a seasoned mariner from Genoa, Italy. Obviously, he wants to make money. I mean, economically, he's motivated. Like nearly all navigators at the time, he believed the world was round, but underestimated its side. The principle that we often say that everyone believed the world was flat is not true. Many people that sailed, we know it's round. We just don't understand its size, its scope, etc. No European realized that there was two giant continents blocking to Asia. A lot of the Europeans, what they failed to realize, that there was another continent, uh, the North and South America, in their way. The Vikings knew that there was a settlement there, but uh, or knew there was a continent, but they abandoned their settlement of Vinland, which is modern-day Greenland, and Newfoundland around 1000 AD because they came in contact with Indians, and it was really expensive. And then the Vikings just as uh, assimilated into Western Europe. Now, Columbus was also a devout Catholic, so this is going to spur him. He's going to want to convert Asians to Christians and also get rid of the Muslim control of the middle trade. Economically, once again, the Muslims were the controller in that part of what we call the Middle East. They were the ones that controlled trade uh, from China to Europe. They wanted to get rid of them. Now, Columbus had failed to get backing, financial bank. Think of as an investor. He didn't get people that wanted to buy into him. Finally, he goes to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel, who just unified Spain. Uh, they were married in 1469 and unified Spain, and uh, in 1492 it completed the Reconquistia, or the Reconquest of the Iberia Peninsula, which is modern-day Spain. And they had just kicked out Muslims, so they don't necessarily like the Muslims either, not to mention Jews and all the others. Uh, and they're gonna, he's going to appeal to their economic interest. Uh, they wanted to also to convert Asians, so not only economic, but the Christian value was convert these people to Christianity and strike back at the Muslims who controlled all the trade. And so ultimately Columbus will get the backing of that. Uh, Columbus will make several trips and you can see where uh, the, the various Europeans will, 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 will focus. One thing to note, the, the British will be 
farther north, north initially. Uh, the French will be a little bit southern than the, the, the British, and then uh, the Spanish will be much, much further south down into the Caribbean, into future South America. Here's Columbus before Queen Isabella. I like how Queen Isabella's got her head on her, her hand on her head here, like, please shut up for the love of, you know, I think Columbus was kind of a scrupulous. In fact, towards the end of his career, or career Columbus was actually marooned on an island by his crew. Um, so he had a mutiny, and he was kicked off his own ship. So um, I think Columbus um, probably had a bad, bad rap as well as not well liked. He wasn't, I think, an enjoyable person to be around. Now Columbus in the New World. So contact one. On October 12, 1492, only after 33 days of sailing from the Canary Islands, Columbus arrived in what the modern day Bahamas. Um, explored the islands off of Hispaniola, Haiti, and Dominican Republic and Cuba. One ship ran aground and he left 38 sailors there, but took back Native Ameri 10 natives back to Europe. So he's only going to come back with two ships. In 1493, he returned to Hispaniola and created a settlement called La Isabella. It failed. Uh, named after the Queen. In 1502, Nicholas de Ovada returned and established a permanent base there. Columbus went to his grave believing he had found a new route to Asia, and that's why he saw, when he saw the people, he called them Indians, because he thought he was an Indian. Um, and like I said, so Columbus comes in. He's really not a commercial success, uh, but he does do one thing to the Spanish. He opens up a whole new world of trade. Columbus, okay, Italian Amerigo Vespucci between 1492 and 1502. To realized, hey, this is a whole new continent not known to the Europeans. This is not Asia. And it's why Amerigo gets named with the Americas. The continent would be named after him, not Columbus. And the thing is, Columbus never makes it to the actual proper America. He only makes it, if you look on the map, to Cuba, Haiti, off the coast of Florida. So he actually never makes it to the mainland. Now, yeah, but that concludes this slide. Sorry, I lost my thought for a second. Here's a glorious photo of Columbus, if you're looking on the PowerPoint now. Coming to the natives of his Christian cross and all this, the ships in the background, yeah, yeah. And with this picture, he brains death. And what I mean by death? Disease. And we'll talk about that more here a little bit in a minute. Thanks to Gutenberg's printing press, the news of Columbus' achievement traveled quickly. John Cabot reached Newfoundland in 1497, and others started more and more westward expansion. The Spanish took the lead, uh, exploration and conquest, and all these people that will emerge be called conquistadors, and they are going to take chunks of land in South America. These conquistadors, conquistadors Spanish soldiers who took land for the crowd, uh, became quite rich. Vasco Nuza de Balboa first was to see the Pacific in 1513. Fernand Magellan, I talked about him. First to sail around the world, his ship, I should say. Hearn and Cortez in 1519 arrived in Teotihuacan, uh, the nerve center of the Aztec Empire. Aztecs were violent wars who practiced ritual sacrifice. So to get allies to take out the Aztec was easy. Yeah, these people are taking us to the top of the pyramids, cutting our heads off, painting us blue. Yeah, we'll help you. <laughs> you are better than these head cutting off people, though you have guns and you smell funny. We would rather help you than be part of the Aztec Empire. We often fail to realize how bad the Aztec were to other tribes. Cortes defeated the Aztec with only a few hundred men, help from the Aztec enemies, and then also they brought some called smallpox, which wiped out a huge population of the Aztec. For Francisco Pizarro conquered the Inca Similary. In fact, he will brain and the Incan king who surrendered to him and murder him in front of uh, the Inca council or the, the ruling group to send a message. After the Incan king had basically take all my riches and all this. Now gold and silver started to pour out of Mexico and Peru back to Spain, making Spain initially one of the richest countries in the world. Now the demographic disaster, Columbus, what's called the Columbian Exchange. Transatlantic flow of goods and people from Europe to the Americas, including disease, products uh, imported, uh, were to Europe were corn, tomatoes, potatoes, peanuts, and tobacco. 
and then tobacco becomes one of the early cash crops that is successful in the Americas. Things that were brought to the Americas, wheat, rice, sugar king, horses, cattle, pigs, and sheep. It's hard to, of us in the Midwest to think of those are only European, not American livestock initially. Now, the final one, germs. There's no accurate estimate of how many people died from the Europeans, and then vice versa, some Europeans will die from American disease, but it's pretty much one way on this. Estimate put between 50 and 90 million people in the Americas prior to arrival. Perhaps 80 million or one-fifth of the world's total population at this point. Many of them are going to die from the germs. Generations of people will be wiped out that they're not, they're not used to. It was disease as much as military prowess and power advanced technology that enabled Europeans to conquer the Americas. The one thing that the Americas gave the Europeans, so we brought and basically killed them, European men are going to encounter STDs they never found, syphilis and others, and that's going to have its own mark. I don't need to go into that. The point of this is it's a demographic disaster. Uh, I mean, I've heard huge estimates as um, out of those 50 to 90 million people, I think anywhere 10, 20, 30 million, maybe 40 million died, uh, give or take, over uh, a several year period, not just one year. You know, you're talking like decades. The point of this is it's devastating. And what we're going to talk about tomorrow, and I'm going to do this chapter in two days, we're going to get to the Spanish Empire tomorrow. Um, you're going to see that the Europeans were not that kind, especially the Spanish. Um, and if you study the Spanish Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition ties into what happens a lot in the New World and into the Indians. Um, and that's where we'll start tomorrow. If you have questions over any of what we've talked about today, please feel free to email me. Thank you. Have a great day.